we took her to a horse riding place. It's kind of, it's cool. You kind of, like, get you, get you up on a horse, and they just kind of let you go um, around these trails and stuff. And the trails... Who we're listening to is Bronte Dakota. She's a senior here at Hadford University, and she's just reminiscing on some fun times with her little sister Lily. And just seeing her smile and stuff on the horse was great. She loves animals. So to really see her on the horse and just see her succeed at riding the horse, she was awesome. There's something that you wouldn't know about Lily, listening to that story. Something that sets her and her family apart. I think something that makes my family a little different than most other families is the fact that my little sister has autism. I think it definitely makes us a little more unique. So when was Lily born and when did you guys notice that she might have had autism? She was born March 20th and she's 10 years old. We started noticing different things when she was like two or three, but we really didn't think much of it. And I think it was around the age of five that we really started to notice that there might be something else going on other than just not necessarily being slow, but not being able to really, you know, make eye contact. And she was having, you know, these tantrums and it was just completely, you know, out of the blue and stuff that she would get these tantrums and she'd get like these little obsessions over things and so that's when we kind of found out that she might have been autistic. My dad and my stepmom had taken her um, to school and we had, were working with different therapists and that's when they diagnosed her with Asperger's syndrome. Um, it kind of goes along a lot with different obsessive compulsive things and a lot of the times the autism goes along with Tourette's and different things like that. So you do see a little bit of that mixed in with her diagnosis, but nothing formally diagnosed other than Asperger's. Bronte had mentioned that Lily has tantrums, and I just wanted to know a little bit more about them. So we were all going to go get pizza as a family. It was me, my stepmom, my dad, my little brother, and Lily. And we were just sitting, and you know, we were having a good time. And so my stepmom and my dad had given them money um, to go play like different games. When Lily ran out of quarters, you know, she wanted more, so we gave her a couple more, and at that point, you know, she had gotten a fair amount, and so had Liam, and it was time to eat, and she just had this full-blown tantrum, this huge meltdown, and at that point, she was eight, so, I mean, it's not normal for an eight-year-old to have, like, a tantrum. She began pulling out her hair, and screaming, and cursing. Obviously, it's kind of like a startling situation. And so, you know, a lot of times parents will be looking at us like, you know, why can't you control your child? Like, what are you doing? And why is she acting like that? So I think that that's definitely really, really hard. Something like that situation is very shocking. So I had to ask Bronte, how did her and her family deal? My dad and his wife are great. They're very cool about the situation. And they're kind of just like, oh, well, you know, that's Lily being Lily. And I mean, we kind of, I mean, I don't want to say we laugh it off because we're not laughing at her. We don't, you know, think it's funny. Other than that, we just take it day by day and we take her tantrums as a grain of salt and we don't really pay much attention to them or reinforce the negative behavior. And when she is acting really good, you know, we really make sure that we tell her that she's having a good day and, you know, she did a good job at that. Brock tries to do what she can do to reach out to Lily while she's at school. This includes talking to her on the phone or... She's Skyping here as much as she can. Hello. Hi, Lily. As for the future, what can be said? We have high hopes for her. We want her to go to college and get married, have a family, and all different things like that. Just to have, you know, a normal, happy, successful life. We do have to look at the possibility that she might not be able to live on her own. She might not be able to get a driver's license. Just because of how she does do things that it is difficult to kind of grasp so we kind of have to take it day by day like I mean for now she's bright and she's beautiful and she's fun and just really just expecting you know the best for her and hoping for the best for her not everyone can say that they have an autistic little sister but I think that you know I'm almost blessed in a sense because I've gotten a little sister and she's so special I mean she's so gifted and talented and really it's given me a better appreciation and better understanding so to really see her count and her side of it just has been so empowering to me. It's made me realize how, you know, extraordinary people with autism or people with Asperger's syndrome really are.